Hi everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. Come back from work, just thought I'd nip up the allotment and uh, sort out and grab a few chilies um, for uh, harvesting some seeds and the sky has totally turned. And there's thunder. So uh, yeah, I'm going to grab a couple of chilies and head back home. See you in a minute. Right, okay, so uh, back at home in the dry and uh, uh, light and um, just, yeah, obviously got some peppers in front of me and my plan is to get a move on and start harvesting the seeds. So I thought I'd show you these. So these are ones that I did last year, which is what I've been sowing and using this year. And you can see that the chilli yellow scotch bonnet, well, they actually came from the supermarket. And these pointed red uh, peppers, or sweet red peppers, they came from crop that grew last year, uh, which was very similar to the red skins. Um, so in front of me, I've got some other peppers. Now, these are the ones that I went and harvested tonight over the allotment. Uh, it's a variety called Badger. And I got given one plant uh, by my colleague at work. And actually it's produced so many peppers. It's been really good. And they have actually got a nice flavor. And whilst it's not the same, so normally I would grow banana pepper and I've grown quite a few of those this year, but actually I do think that this bezier is probably a, a better pepper and if you pick them early, then they're more yellow in colour, leave them until now, then they get this nice red. So my thought is that um, I'm going to save seed from this one, one because it's the biggest, um, so hopefully the genetics will be better, but I'll be saving seed from that and with, well, basically with a view that I will grow this over banana next year. So on to the next one. So I got these um, from a guy that I've got to know the last couple of years who breeds different uh, tomatoes and peppers. He started up his own business uh, selling seed. And we did a bit of a swap. I, was, I gave him some of my tomato seeds and in exchange, he's given me these three chilies. Now, the first one, so the, oh, what I should say is these have been drying for about the last three weeks, hence the state of them. Um, this particular variety is scarlet variegated, so it has a variegated uh, leaf to it. This one here is um, jalapeno cross tiger. So you can see jalapeno shape there, and the tiger is the heat. And this one here is purple tiger. So you can see that they're vastly different in shape and appearance, um, but will be fairly similar in terms of heat. So I've got those three that I'm going to take seed from, and also got some of these from, again, from someone at work, and these are Gusto Purple. Um, these two should be fine for seed i'll probably take some from all of them to be honest but these two where they are fully ripened to be the purple they will have the best seed so much like we did on tomato seeds um, i'm using water for uh, putting the seeds into so the reason being yes you know i'd say probably 80% of the time, the seeds that you take out of the, pe the peppers will be viable if the pepper has ripened sufficiently. If the pepper hasn't ripened and you took them from say like a, you know, a more green version or more yellow version of that, so where the pepper's more juvenile, then there's less chance of the seed being viable. So therefore, um, I always try and use the water method just to make sure really. So what we're going to be doing is um, cutting the peppers up and open, uh, extracting the seeds 
and putting the seeds into the water. And unlike with the tomatoes, so you won't have that much um, fleshy matter to it or anything like that, but um, yeah, which will get suspended in the water. But you are still using the same technique whereby the seed will go into the water. If it's viable, it sinks. If it's not viable seed, it will float onto the surface along with any sort of fleshy uh, skin that you might have from the, the fruit itself. So first off, chopping board. Um, I need to get a knife. Don't know why I've not brought a knife over with me. Um, get your labels ready. Uh, I've got some bags for the seed. Not that I will need these just yet. And these I actually bought from eBay. Um, and I think I only paid about £1.50 or something for uh, 100 bags and that size there is perfect for seeds. Uh, I've had that size last year which as you can see is quite a lot of wasted air space and really when you're doing your seeds you want to be able to keep them nice and airtight so by having a smaller bag is going to be better and let's face it there's no chance that I'm ever going to need that quantity of seed. So that size bag is perfect and I think probably as luck would have it, these labels will stick onto the bag and will be a pretty good finish to be honest. So let me grab a knife and then we'll, we'll start hanging a play. Okay, so sharp knife. Make sure that uh, well, you got a nice good chopping board to hand, so you're not going to cut into anything. Obviously keep your fingers out of the way. This is not for children. So um, we'll start with, uh, well, well, we'll start with Purple Tiger, just purely for reference. So it is a good, good idea if you're gonna be handling chilies that you know are particularly hot, um, or very hot on the Scoville side. So things like the Nagas, the Carolina Reapers, put on a pair of gloves because the uh, caps come from the flesh bit inside can cause burning to your skin. This being a purple tiger should be fine. So we just cut at the very tip, as close up to this head as possible and you can probably see the whites of the seed already and there's never an easy way to do it but I tend to try and lay it flat and almost tear it apart. Also make sure once you've finished doing this to wash your hands because you don't want to be rubbing uh, chilli juice into your eyes. So we just use the tip of the knife to scrape the seeds out, like so. And there's the odd one that you can already kind of tell is probably not going to be viable. But look at those lovely seeds coming out there. And it is worth just literally getting as many seeds out as possible because, as I say, if, if you picked a, a chilli or, say, a sweet pepper or whatever, and it hasn't fully ripened, then the quantity of viable seeds to um, unviable is going to be different. So it's easier, or not easier, but you might just as well scrape off as many seeds as you can stick them in and then if you've got a load of viable great you can make that decision as to whether you want to keep them all if you've got some that aren't viable then obviously that decision is made for you right so that is purple tiger and let me just get a label off And all I'm going to do is just stick it onto the bag, ready, so I know. And you can either use your knife for this or get a teaspoon. Um, 
and we just do one lot at a time. Try not to spill them over the floor like I just did, but that's why you have a fairly decent sized chopping board. Just hold them all in one place. And so that is the last. So give them a little swirl around and you can already see that there are quite a few seeds that have sunk straight to the bottom. So we know that they're almost certainly going to be the viable ones. And there's quite a lot that are floating on the top. You'll probably find that over the, the next couple of days, so I will keep these in the water for about three days. You will find that over the next couple of days, as these uh, some of these floaty ones take on some moisture, that they will sink to the bottom. Uh, equally, you might find that some of the bottom ones rise up. Not very lightly, but so for the time being, that's that done. And then literally, wherever you're going to put them, I just tend to stand them on the label and then you're not going to get them mixed up. So let me get the, the rest of these done and I'll, I'll come back to you. So I thought I'd show you, well, it's probably worth showing you this. So this is on the Scarlet Variegated. And if you get the peppers that are a bit more manageable, get your knife on the inside and then you can go down each of the thirds essentially because that's how peppers generally form so that gives you easy access in to the seeds that are inside and so that's definitely easier where you've got bigger peppers and sweet peppers chili peppers or the thinner chili chili peppers they tend to be um a bit more difficult anyway with the seeds kind of tucked into the the folds of the fruit skin but uh, so yeah we can de-seed the skin element relatively simply a couple left get shot of that and then you're left with this main piece from which to scrape the seed off I can re on so I just thought I'd show you this as well as a bit of an example so actually having cut open one of these purple ones whoop, you can see hopefully that the seed there is a white creamy white in color that means the seed hasn't ripened. It's not going to be viable at all. So in that instance, there's no point in doing anything because really what you're looking for when um, you're looking for a viable seed is it needs to be more brown in coloration or brown cream. And it's only once it's gone that brown color that uh, it will be more viable. So. If you come across seed where it's uh, sort of bordering on white or creamy white, just discard it. It's of no value at all. And there we are. That's first stage done. So we've got the purple tiger, beja, jalapeno, tiger cross, scarlet variegated and gusto purple, all sorted and in their glasses of water. And so you can see that yeah, some of the seeds have already made their way to the bottom and uh, we wait for the others. So, like I say, I'm going to give it three days. That's, um, well, to be honest, that's just kind of the length of time I tend to go for. Um, it's served me well in the past. Um, obviously, some people don't even bother using the water method, but I just tend to think that give it uh, a good couple of days or three days, then you've you've made sure you've given the uh, seeds every opportunity to show their viability. But um, yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. So we're nearly at the finishing off stage, but uh, see you in a couple of days.
Right, back with you after a few days, and here we are. You can see that we've now got clear distinction between what has sunk and what was floating. So, trusty table uh, teaspoon, scoop off the uh, the seeds that are floating on the top, and then we'll move on to the next stage. On that one there you can see that the um, detritus or the uh, sort of old skin matter that might have been attached to some of those seeds and the juvenile seeds have uh, started forming the mould and that's uh, always a good telltale sign that you're ready for um, sorting so uh, let the separation begin so I've done the first one it's always worth after you've and it just gives them a quick stir just to check that nothing else is going to float to the surface and there you can see that all the good ones are all clumped together and ready really for uh, the next stage of drying off but I've got these last few to finish right all sorted taken off the uh, um, seeds that aren't going to be viable and any of the old uh, internal pepper matter uh, and now for the the slightly potentially messier job or wetter job and more risky so you just need to make sure you can drain off this water and then you want to get your seeds ready so what I tend to do just use uh, sections of kitchen roll so um, we can set these out Drain your seeds off and then put the seed onto the kitchen roll. So let's get that done. All right, so just carefully try and get your water out. Do it slowly at an angle where the seeds aren't going to be almost tempted to come out. Just use a spoon if you need to to make sure nothing trickles. And that gets most of the water out there and then again just use your teaspoon scrape the seeds up to the side so they're not in the water and then you can just pull them out onto your cloth like so that's all the seeds out and then ideally what you want to do is try and space them so that they don't all stick together in the drying process. So you can either use a teaspoon or for this stage use something like a cocktail stick or skewer, something like that. It'll give you a little bit of dexterity. Right, that one's done. So just pop it out the way there, still with your label, and repeat the process. Okay, that's them all done. So we've got the Gusto Purple, Scarlet Variegated, Jalapeno Tiger, Beja, and Purple Tiger. So they will sit there for well, probably a, a day to properly dry out. And then uh, following that, we can just pop them into the bags. But uh, for the time being, let's let them dry. Um, just be mindful that you want to put them in an area where they're not going to get disturbed. Or more importantly, if you've got them near a window, don't open a window so the seeds can end up getting blown everywhere. Um, as this is the stage where uh, there's the greatest potential for mix up. Right, so back with you. Uh, these seeds have had a whole day to, well, day and night to dry out. And you can see they're dry. So essentially, just got to pop them from here into the bags. There is no easy way of doing this, trust me. Um, I've tried multiple times. Um, I tend to use a, a knife and just try and scrape them all into one corner and then hope for the best as I pour them in. Definitely, uh, my suggestion is though, move all others out the way 
whilst you tackle one because invariably the seeds end up scattering of the one that you are going to do. So uh, at least then, oh, gone through a slight damp patch there on the worktop. It's important also to make sure you have a clean surface to work on. So let's just pop those out of the way. Right, so that's the first one we're going to tackle and then uh, proceed to get the others in the bag. So I just use a so I just use a little sharp well a little knife upturned so you're not cutting into anything. Nope, this one there. Kind of get them into one area. Only your bag up, hope for the best. So that's the only disadvantage with using these very small bags is that it's a very small area to work with. Um, what you can do, you can always tip these onto a teaspoon and then uh, spoon them in if you need to. But that's as we need to. So get your seeds down, make sure you get the air out of the bag and then seal it up. And they're safe in there. So that's the first one done. Purple Tiger. So uh, just get the others down there. Or done, I should say. And I'm on to the last one now. Just getting the uh, beige done. Here we are. So, got jalapeno tiger, scarlet variegated, gusto purple, purple tiger, and beja. All done. Mission accomplished, finally. So, um, yeah, that's the seeds done. Uh, ready for using for next year. It is worth pointing out to you that unless you are growing that variety next to that variety and only that variety and you've hand pollinated or you've cross pollinated the flowers to ensure that you get purple tiger as a fruit, you won't necessarily get a totally true form if you're saving your own seed because obviously the bees do their thing and they will be swapping pollen from say purple tiger to scarlet variegated and you'll end up with something you know very similar or in between or could be spot on but you won't know but uh, so that is where um, buying seeds from I suppose commercial companies comes in because you know the seed that you're getting well what you should be getting is going to be accurate uh, to a description. Obviously saving uh, your own seed is much cheaper and if you've had a particularly good crop of something or fruit than something then it is definitely worth doing. But uh, just bear in mind that your methods won't be as controlled as um, the commercial guys do it. So that said though, we've got five packets worth of our own seed, uh, which have come from, you know, essentially varieties I didn't have because the fruits were given to me. So that does help expand uh, the range of plants that I'm doing and all for basically nothing. Uh, but uh, there's no reason why, again, if you go to the supermarket, if you find a, well, chili pepper, um, those yellow scotch bonnet seeds that I showed you the other day, uh, they came from the supermarket originally. So uh, if you find something that you like, it's worth uh, saving your own seed. And uh, like I say, it saves you a bit of money. 
um, ensures that you're carrying on with the varieties that you know and you like. But um, yeah, just a little bit time consuming. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. If you have got any questions, then uh, please always send them over to me. I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on the future videos I'm doing. And I always say it, but it's definitely true at the moment, whilst it's a little bit gloomy out there, just enjoy doing your gardening, enjoy doing your prep work, ready for, well, either for now or for next year, and uh, doing a little bit of research and then having some uh, relaxation time. But uh, till next time, bye for now. See you soon.